Thanks for viewing this presentation, kindly accepted by the Convention Committee. I am going to address some questions and ideas that have been enthusing me about the Central Gaul of Craton for over 30 years of exploration and collaborative research. A belt is only as mature as the last idea. The 1590 million year copper belt around Olympic Dam is no exception. So today I am integrating three relatively new concepts. Firstly, the Olympic Mega Metallogenic Event, which from now on I will refer to as the OME. Secondly, a super caldera setting with a belt wide marker horizon. And thirdly, a simple zircon based whole rock pathfinder ratio. Together, the concepts offer improved target vectoring, as will be demonstrated in the well drilled Stuart shelf. An example of the expanding spectrum of ODH deposits is the Paris Nankerville system 300 kilometres south of Olympic Dam. A precursor of subduction monzodiorite is overprinted by all the elements of the nepithermal porphyry system. A lithocap, propolitic and advanced argillic alteration, a copper gold scarn and the Paris intermediate sulphidation silver deposit. Sinmin dikes and alunite are dated as coeval with the Olympic Dam mineralisation. Precise dating is now able to resolve the rapid sequence of OME events. The Lower Gaula Range Volcanics, or GRV, were extruded between 1597 and 1589 million years, whereas the upper GRV day sites were rapidly emplaced at 1587. The Paris Dykes and GRV host occur in the 1591 to 1589 transition. The timing of the Olympic Dam deposit is also in this range. The best fit for these data is the Gaula Super Caldera model, with rapid extension and collapse tr triggering the OME. Mineralising dikes and cupolas telescoped into the caldera shoulders. IOCGs formed on the northeast shoulder, while epithermal porphyry deposits formed in the prior subduction terrain on the southern shoulder. The postulated mid GRV stratigraphic marker of the OME is represented as the orange dashed line. In the Stewart Shell study area, the hematite ISCGs are up on the shoulders, whereas the magnetite dominated deposits are within the caldera, presumably due to hotter conditions under a thicker GRV blanket. Using the study drill holes, a composite section was reconstructed, allowing for post mineralisation movements. This shows the interpreted connection between the postulated OME marker and the collapse of ferruginous sediments and conglomerates into the hematite ISCG breaches from the paleo surface on the, sh on the caldera shoulder. The strato tectonic model is particularly de demonstrated at Emmy Bluff. Also, Oz Minerals report volcanogenic quartz conglomerates in included deep within most of their deposits. Support for the mid GRV marker within the caldera comes from the Red Lake Prospect, where a 22 metre thick unit of conglomerate consists of angular volcanic clasts and rounded quartzite cobbles. It is also intersected in two adjacent holes with thickening towards the caldera margin, recording caldera subsidence. The conglomerate is associated with hematite, fluorite and tourmaline alteration, indicative of a hydrothermal vent. The majority of the copper is in magnetite alteration beneath the basement unconformity, as expected for the model. What else could we learn and, and adapt from Paris? Scott Halley pointed out the Sin Min rhyolite dikes have depleted zirconium, characteristic of, a very, of very prospective intrusives. The mineralised breaches in orange show mixing between the higher zirconium hafnium ratios of the hosts and the lower signature of the rhyolites, interpreted as syn mineralisation and dated as coeval with Olympic Dam. The opportunity is to have a simple whole rock measurement of alteration. This has research support for, for zirconium depletion in hydrothermally altered zircons, whether magmatic and igneous rocks or multi provenance in metasedimentary rocks. A universal geochem model, geochemical model is proposed for the OME. I also introduced the zircon alteration index as 40 minus the zirconium hafnium ratio to achieve a positive alteration scale increasing from 0 to 20. The geological survey undertook an excellent study of 35 usable holes on the Stewart shelf. A Pathfinder Prospectivity Index PPI was established using an algorithm of 11 regular Pathfinder elements. Their data were used to evaluate the ZAI model. Their probability plots show pathfinders like cerium and, and selenium are dependent on the style of alteration, whereas the zircon hosted zirconium and hafnium have a much more even distribution across sericite, chlorite, and iron oxide altered rocks. Zirconium and hafnium in zircon therefore offer a more stable platform for whole rock alteration measurement. ZAI normalizes the zircon variations in hosts into readable downhole profiles, whereas other pathfinders have spiky distributions and lower correlation coefficients, more in keeping with mineralization. Let's have a closer look at the geology of this Winjabi hole. 
It intersected magnetite-hosted copper mineralisation associated with rhyolite dikes. The dikes have ZIIs approaching uh, 20, like at Paris. The altered to mineralised matter sediments show a progressive ZAI trend to about 6 near the dikes. This is good support for ZAI as an alteration measure. Back at Red Lake, Lake the upper GOV shows zero ZII as expected, whereas the prospective host lower GOV shows sporadic positive ZII values below the marker, then strong ZII values with magnetite copper mineralisation in the basement. In the less altered hole three kilometres away, the ZII values in the GOV and basement are lower. A single hole at Chianti shows low ZII values also for the upper GRV, whereas the marker has elevated ZIIs around 5, with gradual reduction through the lower GRV and basement. The orderly profile introduces the concept of analysing the stratotectonic profile with ZII. The interpretation here is that marker and the lower GRV are proximal and lateral to mineralised basement nearby, as is known at this prospect. Examples of more proximal and downwards vectors come from established deposits like Carapatina. Here is the first hole drilled off the main gravity anomaly by a few hundred metres. There is a strong ZII signature with, a, with an increasing downhole trend. The copper and silver values may not have provided much interest. The first hole drilled near Cam Sim in 1977 is livened up by the ZII showing a near and deeper target. Even the Pandara has strong ZII and metal values. It is also an example of how a few, few analyses are needed into the basement to achieve a 2D vector. Emmy Bluff continues to give, with ZAI anomalism in the marker vectoring to stronger and deeper ZAIs in the hematite breccia. The overlying Pandara was logged as transitional with the marker here, so the anomalous ZAI values in the Pandara, as at Cam Sim, may be primary. This has significant exploration ramifications. The established deposits were used as templates to determine a general target proximity scale for ZII values. The aim is to have a broader alteration vector rather than solely relying on gravity anomalies and iron oxide alteration closer to deposits. A preliminary template is developed for estimating target proximities from ZII values and 2D target vectors from ZII profiles. Holes rated as proximal are likely to be within 5 kilometres of, of the centre of a hydrothermal system and possibly as close as 500 metres and therefore are worthy of follow-up. Holes with distal or remote ratings are still useful in guiding target vectors for adjacent holes. Where possible, the 2D ZAI vectors of single holes were upgraded to 3D vectors by either ZIA analysis of adjacent holes, location on the caldera margin or proximity to magnetotelluric conductors. Of the eight targets recommended for review, three had no 3D assistance. Red Lake had a southerly vector due to the lower ZAI writing of the adjacent hole, and Whistle Pig near Punt Hill and Winjabi are vectored towards the Caldera shoulder. The best targets have MT support, starting with Emmy Bluff within the Arcuna gravity complex, which includes Oak Dam West. Both have structural conduits mapped by gravity gradient strings and MT pipes. Emmy Bluff Deeps is an analogous to Oak Dam West, with historic logs recording what is now interpreted as the upper copper pore mar sediments collapsed into the hydrothermal breccia. Early logging of a 1977 western mining hole near Carapatina describes a likely hematite conglomerate marker with a strong ZAI profile and an MT conductor interpreted nearby worthy of review for further target definition. With the general consensus that the spectrum of OD to page deposits is expanding, some have said so what? For starters, I argue that the mid-GRV marker adds a universal reference level to our selection of areas amenable for fresh targeting tactics. The other concept proposed today is a simpler whole rock pathfinder tool that uses the universal platform of zircon hosted elements to measure the degree of alteration with more certainty and further out from the hydrothermal centres. You cannot escape geology, in good exploration, so the ZIA numbers gain real meaning when compared with stratigraphy downhole and across holes. This provides a stronger target vector that can prioritise gravity anomalies or encourage detailed MT or other electromagnetic surveying. On to recommendations. I believe the best opportunities to make new discoveries are under our feet, that is, in well-tended so-called brownfields districts. However, companies have varying objectives according to size and funding, so there is a shortfall in the desired level of innovation. 
The challenge is to maximise concept and target testing, particularly on tenured ground. I will leave you here to consider the list of recommendations aimed at ex expediting Australia's research and discovery rate. Thank you again for your interest, and I'm happy to elaborate on any of the presentation. Cheerio.